Rank 16. New technologies are, are bringing into question many of the assumptions we've made for thousands of years. I mean, what are we? We're information. We're patterns of information. We back up the information on our computers. We don't back up our mind file. Eventually, we'll be able to do that. The pace of exponential growth is really what describes uh, information technologies, and it's not just computation. There's a big difference between linear and exponential growth. If I take 30 steps linearly, one, two, three, four, five, I get to 30. If I take 30 steps exponentially, 2, 4, 8, 16, I get to a billion. It makes a huge difference. I got into looking at the future really because of my practical interest in being an inventor and realizing the key to being successful is not just getting your gadget to work, but timing, doing it at the right time. Larry Page and Sergey Brin had a great idea for search engines, but they did it exactly the right time. If they were a year earlier or later, uh, it wouldn't be Google, it would be something else. I began to study technology trends and made a startling discovery that if you measure the underlying properties of information technology, the number of MIPS per dollar or bits per dollar or, or genetic sequences per dollar, they're very predictable. And they follow exponential trajectories, doubling in power every year, depending on what you're measuring. And with that, I've been using it actually primarily to time my own technology projects, but I can also use it to look at what technology will be in 10 years or 20 years, and then we can invent with the technologies of 20 years from now. We can't build those machines yet, but we can imagine what they will be like. The quest to overcome death is, is an age-old desire, but we didn't really have the scientific knowledge or the technology to deal with it. Now we have new tools. Uh, early philosophies emerged in pre-scientific times. Uh, now we really have insights as to how the brain works. I believe we will actually finish understanding how the brain works within 20 years. And we'll be able to build systems that are comparably intelligent and amplify our own intelligence. So that challenges a lot of the notions we have about, for example, limitations of human life. What you're watching is a uh, design of a robotic red blood cell. Uh, once we understand its principles of operation and the pace with which we're reverse engineering biology is accelerating, uh, we can actually design these things to be thousands of times more capable. If you replace 10% of your red blood cells with these robotic versions, you could do an Olympic sprint for 15 minutes without taking a breath. You could sit at the bottom of your pool for four hours. So, uh, honey, I'm in the pool will take on a whole new meaning. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what we do in our Olympic trials. Presumably we'll ban them, but then we'll have the specter of teenagers in their high school gyms routinely outperforming the uh, Olympic athletes. The same technologies that are going to extend human longevity are also going to radically expand our resources. Do we have enough energy? We have 10,000 times more sunlight than we need to meet all of our energy needs. We need to capture one part in 10,000. And the technology to do that is emerging from nanotechnology. Solar energy is doubling every two years. It's only eight doublings away from meeting all of our energy needs. 16 years from now, solar and other renewable energies will meet all of our needs very inexpensively and will make fossil fuels obsolete. There's a similar story with, with water, with food, with housing, uh, nanotechnology modules to, to build houses very inexpensively, and these technologies are also going to grow exponentially. And it is only these exponentially growing information technologies that have the scale to address the major challenges of humanity, like the environment, energy, poverty, disease, and so on. The nature of life and death is going to change. First, we'll have biotechnology, where we can reprogram biology to overcome disease. And then we'll have nanotechnology, where we can have little devices in our bloodstream that will wipe out disease at the level of one cell. And ultimately, we'll be putting computers in our brains and we'll be able to back up our brain, so if you get in an accident, you could recreate that portion of your brain. If that sounds very futuristic, I point out that Parkinson's patients do that already. You put a computer inside your brain to replace the portion of your brain that's damaged, and that's not an experiment, that's a real therapy. Ironically, a lot of the opposition to new technologies comes not from religion, but from what I call fundamentalist humanists, or fundamentalist naturalists, that so we should not change biology, the anti-GMO movement of, uh, of opposing any genetic modification, even if it could 
help children overcome blindness, like golden rice, uh, that was very uh, negative in many instances. Uh, but basically, I think we have a, a universal consensus to grow human knowledge to overcome the major challenges. Evolution is a spiritual process. It moves us closer to the ideal of God. I mean, what, what is God? God is described as being unlimited in intelligence, creativity, love, beauty. What do we see in, in evolution, starting with biological evolution and technological evolution? Entities become more complex, more knowledgeable, more intelligent, more beautiful, more capable of higher level of emotions like love. So it moves towards this ideal of being God. And it never actually reaches infinite levels, but it explodes exponentially to become greater. So evolution, in my mind, is a spiritual process. It makes us, moves us closer to the ideal of God, of being, of what God represents, never quite getting there. It is a perspective to understand the exponential nature of progress in information technology. I think it's important that people understand it for a practical reason, which is, it is these technologies that have the seeds of the solution to the major problems we have. They also introduce new dangers. We need to focus and understand what, these, what the future brings.